When you solve a differential equation using a Laplace transform, you will find your solution capital F as a function of S. You will find the Laplace transform of your solution, F of t. So how are you going to find your original solution back? You can try, of course, some function, complete, compute their Laplace transform, and just hope they yield the desired one. But this is not a very efficient procedure, of course, with no guarantee of success. You can also look the original function up in a table which contains functions and their inverse Laplace transform. But how was the table made? You want to be able to compute the inverse Laplace transform yourself. And that is what you will learn in this video. So when can you compute the inverse Laplace transform and how do you have to do it? Well, suppose we have some function f of t, piecewise continuous of exponential order. You need this to be able to compute the Laplace transform of f. And suppose we have some constant a positive, such that this integral over here also converges. We will need a second condition in order to compute the inverse Laplace transform. Then you know how to compute the Laplace transform f of s, Laplace of transform of f of t, as follows. You have your f of t, uh, you multiply by e to the power minus st, and you integrate from 0 to infinity with respect to time. And then you have your Laplace transform f of s. So how do you compute your inverse Laplace transform? So you want to have your f of t. You take your f of s. You multiply by e to the power st. Okay, that makes sense, similar to Fourier transforms. But then the integration boundaries are a bit odd. You integrate from a minus ir to a plus ir. So you will have to integrate over a line in a complex plane somewhere with respect to s, and then some factor with the 2pi. Okay, that's clear. Similar to the Fourier transforms, you get some 2pi somewhere. Uh, so that's how you compute it. But why? why? Why do we get this strange formula? So how do we prove it? Well, we'll use the Fourier transform. It says if you have some function g of tall, uh, integral with respect to tall from minus infinity to infinity is finite, then you know your g of t, uh, you do the Fourier transform and then the inverse tra Fourier transform after each other. So what's your g of t? You have your g of tall, you do the Fourier transform like this, and then you do the inverse Fourier transform like that, and you get back your g of t with the factor 2 pi. So that's the formula for Fourier transform combined with inverse Fourier transform, original function back. And you can use this formula to find the inverse Laplace transform with the following trick. Uh, first of all, Fourier transforms have functions which are uh, 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 non-zero also for negative arguments. Uh, Laplace transforms well, typically, typically think of time. So we set our function g of tall to zero for negative time and to something related to f of tall for positive time. Now, what happens uh, if you substitute this g of tall in this formula over here? Well, on the left-hand side you get, of course, e to the power minus a t times f of t. Just put plug in uh, t equals tall. And on the right-hand side uh, we get the 1 over 2 pi. We get the integral. Uh, now we uh, have the d tall and the omega. We have to e to the power minus i omega tall, and then we have to uh, pay a bit more attention. Our function is zero if a tall is negative, so we integrate from zero to infinity, and we have also our function e to the power minus a tall f of tall. So there we are. And then we want to sort of convert this inner part into an e to the power minus c times f of uh, t to get the in the inner part, the Laplace transform of f. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we define a new parameter s equals a plus i times omega. So you can solve for omega. Uh, so s minus a equals i times omega. So omega equals s minus a over i equals minus i s plus i a. Then we leave the left hand side as it is and we put this uh, substitution in our integral. We keep the 1 over 2 pi. Uh, the, the tall uh, is left as it is. The f of tall is 
left as it is, uh, the e to the power minus i omega tall, well, i omega equals s minus a, so that gives you uh, uh, minus s tall. Uh, and here you have an e to the power s minus a times t. And from the d omega, you get a uh, d omega equals the d of minus i s. So uh, there we have all terms. And now you see that over here we have gotten uh, the Laplace transform of f. So what, do we, what have we got? Well, still this left hand side is still the same. Uh, you take out this uh, minus i s, so you minus i s is coming here. Uh, you have an e to the power minus i uh, minus a t over there. You are not integrating with respect to t, so that's a constant. So you can take it in front. That's coming here. Uh, from for your boundaries, you had a minus i r and a plus i times r. Uh, the e to the power s t is over there, and here so here you have your e to the power minus s tall f tall et tall. Now what you see is that over here you got your f of s. By definition, uh, you keep the integration uh, uh, boundaries, keep the e to the power s t, you keep the d s, and you have the additional e to the power minus a t. And then you can simplify, of course, you those two cancel out. The minus i becomes 1 over i. So what you have what you're left with is f of t equals 1 over 2 pi i, the strange boundaries, and e to the power st fsds, which is exactly the formula we wanted to have for our inverse Laplace transform.